Hey folks, this is Matty K Slash, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. We are looking at the Kerbal Solar System from within the tracking station of Kerbal Space Center. And the reason that we are here is that I wanted to show you a few things. We have a couple of things out here that are noteworthy. One is this Northwest Crater Base, which uh, is actually abandoned. It was a crash-landed <laughs> uh, lunar landing attempt, but you can see there are no Kerbins in it. And uh, I just forgot to mark it as debris before I left it. So I think we're going to go ahead and just explode it so that it is no longer on our list. The next item I wanted to mention is here's Desert Sphere 1. You may recall that was the probe that we sent to Duna to collect some science, and we ended up landing it on the Duna surface after we were done with it, so that was pretty cool. Hope to get back there again sometime real soon. And the, this other item is one of the steps towards that. This is the Kerbacular Space Station. Uh, I decided I wanted to have a space station in orbit around Kerbin and uh, try to use it as an orbital rendezvous slash refueling area. And this is what I've got. It's a weird little contraption. Um, it's got this little uh, core area with docking ports on it. Uh, it's still got this stage mostly filled with fuel. So I haven't... Originally, the plan was to jettison this right off of here and just have it be debris. Uh, but we didn't end up uh, using most of it to get the station into orbit, so it is still there to refuel from. I've got a whole bunch of RCS fuel on here, as you can see there, monopropellant. And, like I said, plenty of opportunity for docking. I've got big solar panels on it. Keep it in place so I can keep the lights on, for one thing. Uh, I also have big uh, battery banks on it. Three on this side, three on the other side. I don't know how you can see them. Uh, you should be able to see them there. Some more RCS stuff up here. Another docking port at the top. And then inside we have... Jebediah Kerman, who cannot see anything straight out the window because of <laughs> the docking port that is there. But uh, you can look out the sides of the window there, and there is... His home planet of Kerbin, rotating gorgeously underneath him. But he is the only one up here. I think there's there's capacity for two in this pod. Uh, but I, I, he's the only one that's actually in there. Uh, and then the hitchhiker's can also will hold some additional folks as well. But I don't think there's anybody in there. So, I didn't realize you could get a crew report from there, though. Uh, and that's about it for this. I haven't actually constructed any ships to try to use it yet, so that will be probably in, a, in the next episode. What I wanted to do in this episode, though, let's get back to the Space Center, is I, on a whim, I decided that I would really like to emulate the Voyager space probe in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, two space probes, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, were launched from, uh, you know, by NASA back in the 70s? Let's see, what do we got here? Uh, that would work. Yeah, I guess we'll use this one as our probe core. Uh, back at, the Voyager probes were launched back in the 70s, and as far as I know, they're both still transmitting data. Maybe only one of them is, and I'm misremembering, but I think they both are, which I think that's just amazing. So we're going to throw a communitron on there like that. See, we can't tweak that at all. That's fine. Uh, what else can we do here? Accelerometer. Uh, when properly settled on a surface, that's no good. Barometer. We can get I guess barometric pressure on the way up. Not that that's going to be particularly interesting data, but whatever. We can throw a thermometer on here as well. Let's put that there. Just loading it with random scientific uh, instruments. 
The goo is too big, so we will not try the goo, but I don't think we can get anything new from the goo. New from the goo? Um, hmm. Seems a little lopsided. But that's alright. These parts have negligible mass. So let's see, what else do we need? Well, we need... Uh, we need battery power. That's huge. Oh, uh, you know what? That would make it less... See, this is hold more, right? Yeah. Oh, but it's huge. That's why it holds more. <laughs> uh, let's throw a battery pack on there. Why don't we? That looks even more lopsided, though. Let's try putting it over here and see if it looks less lopsided. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, now I definitely want the big old volt voltaic panels. And I don't want four times geometry. I actually want, I think I'm gonna go singleton here. I want it to have a cool look to it when it's done. So I'm just gonna slap them on some of these panels. It won't be three-way symmetry. Uh, hmm, maybe we actually do wanna do four-way though. That could be fun. Look like a giant plus. Oops, I got the whole thing. There we go. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Can we, we can't open those inside for test purposes. All right, let's call this Voyager. And what we're going to try to do with this is the same thing that the Voyager probes are doing. They are actually on a an escape trajectory from our solar system and I believe one of them is, is outside the orbit of Pluto, I think, at this point. It is, like, basically outside the solar system. Uh, so that is our goal, is to get it on an escape trajectory. And then we'll just kind of let it go. And as we do other missions to other planets and whatnot, we'll see how far it gets over the course of this save. So what's beyond our solar system? will be the description. All right, what else do we need? Oh, I said battery, oh, I put a battery pack on it though. Uh, you know what, we're gonna do it this way. What does that hold, 200 versus 100? Yeah, that's the way to do it. And then I think we'll just take this off and put it on this side. So it looks a little bit more uniform, that's good. All right, what else do we need on here? I think utility-wise, that's it. It doesn't need to land anywhere, so we don't need parachutes or anything. Do we want... Hmm. Oh my gosh, these things are huge. Now, I don't think we want to put any lights on it. We'll just rely on the sun for that. All right, aerodynamically, nothing important there. Structurally, uh, we're going to need to adapt to a larger size at some point, but not right off the bat. So we'll just kind of keep that on the side. Let's go to propulsion. I do want this to have some measure of propulsion available to it on its own. That's too big though. Do we have a tiny? You know what, we have these little, oh, that's monopropellant. That's not quite what I want. Uh, it's the radial mount liquid engine isn't what I want either. Oh, we do have the atomic motor on here. Well, that's pretty huge too, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm, that'll be, that won't be part of this stage. Maybe we won't actually end up having any propellant right on this, because it doesn't look like we have it really unlocked yet. So let's go ahead and put in a separatron, which would be under structural. We should have the tiny ones. Yep, perfect. How does this differ from that? Oh, this is a big one, okay. Oh, that's for rovers, okay. Radio attachment point. Oh, right, right, okay. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, let's drag this up here a little bit. So this is, from above this separator, that is our probe. And hopefully we'll have it on an escape trajectory before we set it loose here. Uh, you know, separatrons might be kind of cool, actually. Let's get some separatrons on there. 
And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna throw it on here, and I'm gonna hold down the mod key. Nope, that's not it. Is it the shift key? Yes, it's the shift key. And we're gonna give it a little bit of an angle, and then we will redo it because I forgot to put on the symmetry. So now when it detaches, this should push it forward and give it a little bit of spin, which will look very, very cool. All right, what else do we need? So that, that's enough of this stage. So next, let's throw on one of these big old tanks because I wanna make sure that, whoops, I wanna make sure that we have, oops, nope, that's the wrong key. On Linux, you use the left shift key for some things and the right shift key for other things, and I keep getting them mixed up. All right, so this just goes, we'll just put that there. That's fine, I'm happy with that. Oops, dang it. Okay, here it is. Finished Voyager probe design. I'm a little concerned about the height of this component, but I'm hoping that it ends up not being a factor. Uh, thankfully, with it being a probe, we don't have any Kerbin lives at stake if it fails, so off to the launch pad! <laughs> My other concern with this is that there may not actually be enough uh, thrust to escape the gravitational pull of the sun in this design. So if that's the case, we may have to mess around with the design a little bit more. We'll sh we shall see. All right. Craft seems reasonably sturdy. Gonna throttle up to maybe 80%, just as a guess for optimal ascent through the atmosphere for right now. Gonna keep an eye on our resources. And we'll put the SAS on with launch of Voyager probe in three, two, one, launch! And up we go! It's actually nice and steady now, oh, look at that. Nice shading effect as we clear the vehicle assembly building and we're starting to get up above the mountains with the sunrise to the west? Wait, is that really the case or is this sunset? I actually don't know. I guess. I've never really thought about it before. <laughs> Maybe that's sunset and I'm just not paying enough attention to it. So we should be in pretty good shape. These decouplers here are these. Oh, I forgot to sign action groups to the solar panels. I'll have to open them manually, darn it. But that goes to the solid fuel boosters on the sides and the separatrons attached to them. So, right? Yes. So whenever those jettison, those should blow away nicely. I've got asparagus staging here, so we'll lose these side liquid boosters as well. We're doing pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and throttle up all the way at this point. There is a whole chart of optimum surface speed at various at, uh, altitudes so that you know whether or not you're going too fast. And actually, I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit here. I'm gonna stick with this for now. Might have to throttle that back up when we run out of solid fuel. But we're doing pretty good now. Is it sunset? No, it seems to be sunrise. But isn't that the west? Does the sun rise in, on the west, in the west, and set in the east on Kerbin? Or have I got things backwards somehow? Because 90 should be east, and that's that direction to the right as we're looking at it right now. I am so very confused. Everything I thought I knew about the world is wrong. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Solid fuel boosters are about to run out of gas, so we're going to be jettisoning them very shortly. And away they go. A 
looking good. Got a little bit of a spin during that, and we've got a little bit of a wobble as we're crossing various boundaries of the atmosphere, but we're gonna go ahead and make for orbit now. Oh, you know what a potential concern is? That little probe might not have enough torque in the reaction wheels to keep this craft steady as we start actually maneuvering it. I did not consider that. Oh, what is our... Hold on, I'm cutting my engines because our marker... Okay, no, that's fine. Get back on. Get back on. Throttle up. Throttle up. Throttle up. There we go. A marker is not where I thought it would be, so I was concerned. Let's get a little bit of a roll going. We can. Well, we got separatrons on there, so maybe I won't worry about the roll. And there those go. Whoa! Got a lot of roll now. Oh, wow, that's unfortunate. All right, well, hopefully that will help keep it kind of steady. I don't know. <laughs> How are we doing on that apoapsis? All right, we're going, doing quite well. Let's uh, throttle down a bit here. Not, not, let's not that... Wow, I can't talk for the life of me right now. Let's not let that get too far ahead of us. I'm going to bring it down to about there. That looks good. Now that our spin has mostly worked itself out, let's get back on target. We may be able to use a good chunk of this orange tank for our actual escape maneuver, which was not in my mission plan. I was expecting to do it primarily with the nuclear engine. So that is good. The more fuel we have, the better the chance we get. All right, let's try to lock in about there. SAS seems capable now of handling it. Our apoapsis is approaching that 70,000, or it's past that 70,000 mark now. So that's good. Doing quite well, getting into the nighttime. So I guess it was sunset. It just looked like sunrise because we were uh, going up, I think is the deal there. What is our apoapsis now? I'm going to let this get to about 90. And then we're going to coast for a bit. Uh, it's not the most graceful orbit inclination, I don't think. But I will accept it. Oh, I just went way over the 90 mark. Let's plan for our maneuver here. Just so I have an idea of about how much it will take to get a nice circular orbit. That's circular enough for me. So, 40 second burn. So we'll start at T minus 20 seconds as per usual. Let's try and get ourselves over to that attitude, which might actually be difficult. Gonna do a little bit of a burn just to get the gimbling going, but that doesn't seem to be helping much. All right, well, we'll just wait. We'll start our burn 30 seconds out and adjust our attitude when we're at full throttle. We're not gonna deploy any of this stuff until the satellite is free and clear. Or until it's about to, I suppose. Now, I'll wait until it's free and clear, but it's going to be a pain to <laughs> expand those solar panels. I messed up not uh, setting up an action group for them. Alright, we're going to start our burn primarily so that we can get ourselves pointed in the right direction. There we go. Just want an orbit here to start. And then we will project out 
when we should try to make our solar system escape. Which essentially is just going to involve burning in the general direction of the orbital trajectory of Kerbin to increase our velocity relative to the sun and therefore push out our apoapsis of our orbit around the star as opposed to around a planet. All right, and we have a 140 by 86 orbit. Not the prettiest, but it will do the job. Our next step is to zoom out here a bit and figure out what the trajectory is of Kerbin. Now, Kerbin's orbiting counterclockwise around the sun from this perspective. So we want to go straight up in this view, which means we're gonna want to be burning essentially here as hard as we possibly can. Now let's see what the game says we need in terms of delta V. Okay, let's actually move this a little bit because that's putting, I want the apoapsis to be pretty close to opposite the sun. Okay, that's actually telling me a completely different idea, and it's saying that I need to do it very soon. So actually, uh, let's just throttle up and see what we get. <laughs> Enough of these maneuvers. We're just trying to get out of here. Ideally, what I would do is I would, end, I would slingshot around another planet and... Uh, achieve something there. Okay, we just ran out of gas on our big orange tank. So we will let it spin off into the distance. Fantastic. And then this fairing, I think, will explosively deploy when we fire our engines, which we will do now. And we're off and running. So, what kind of an impact are we having here? Let's stay on that nav ball there. Here's our fuel consumption. Looking pretty good. Now, I've learned a trick. This is going to take a little while with the nuclear engine because it, it doesn't burn very fast. But this is a tiny ship. I'm not too concerned about the physics here. Although I am concerned about the overheat. Let's uh, let's turn this down a little bit. There we go. So if I hold the modifier key, which on I said on Linux is uh, right shift, but on Windows I think is alt, and I do the time warp thing, it will do a physics time warp. Which, hilariously enough, put the plume way back there. But it does save us some time on this screen pushing the apoapsis out. Which, I just learned that today. I didn't know that you could do that. Because normally when you try to accelerate, it, or try to time warp while you're burning, it says you can't time warp while you're burning. But it will let you physics time warp. Whoa! It'll also let you control your ship, so you have to be careful what you're doing there. What is the altitude of Elu? It is... 106 and we're getting up to 70 billion yeah we'll, we will clear uh, the solar system with no problems using this methodology how far from Kerbin are we already 500 kilometers 600 kilometers we're on the dark side of it haven't seen the Sun quite yet there goes that apoapsis further and further out we're just going to go ahead and burn this entire stage. Don't quite have an escape yet. There's an escape. We are now officially on course to leave this solar system. And we've got half a tank of fuel left. So we're just going to let that burn itself all the way out. We'll put the Milky Way in the background, or whatever the Kerbins call their galaxy. Because that is essentially where we're heading now. Now that we're 
aimed for interstellar space. That is... We're outside the realm of the solar system, so the next line on the address is... Oh, there's the sun. Is... The galaxy. Orbital velocity over 7,000 meters per second. These nuclear engines are very, very good, and they are likely going to be what we use uh, on our mission to Duna. Uh, I have a plan for trying to get a manned mission out to Duna. It might be needlessly complicated, but we shall see <laughs> if it works out or not. Fuel is almost out. I'm going to drop back down to one-time warp here. And... Zero. So, we are now locked, essentially, on this trajectory out of the solar system. Let's go ahead... And we'll turn the SAS off. We don't need it anymore. Don't care about it. And we will deploy the satellite. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do the barometric reading on the way up. Oh, well. <laughs> and I think this actually says can't log it. Yep. So the science was just to look pretty. Let's deploy our satellite. Mm -mm. I think we should... Or we're going to try opening the, the solar panels... First, I don't think they'll fly off from the centrifugal force. It's entirely possible that they will. And if they do, no big deal. It's not like we're really going to be transmitting anything from here. I'm also going to go ahead and extend the communications dish just so it looks cool. All right, probe is ready to go. Sending it off into the far reaches of the solar system in three... Two, one, launch! Whoa, okay, that's a lot faster than I expected it to be spinning. <laughs> All right, well, it is well on its way to see the, the world, or the galaxy, I should say, see the universe. Now it's essentially just a rock in space. Very, very cool. Now, the, unfortunately, this rotation, which is very cool and sort of the thing that you'd see, though not this fast, in an actual space probe, this will stop uh, as soon as we try to do any kind of time acceleration or click away from it and come back to it. It won't be rotating anymore, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Farewell, Voyager. Best of luck to you as you make your way out of the solar system. Maybe you'll see cool things. I don't know if there are any Easter eggs out there or not. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode of Kerbal Space Program. A little bit of a one-off thing here, but uh, I thought it would be cool to have a little bit of a, a buffer between the three-part multi-mission or multi... What am I thinking? Multi-part. Three parts. I said three parts already. Why am I saying multi-parts? Three-part uh, mission... Uh, last time for to go to the moon for rescues. So, yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one with a manned mission to Duna. Fingers crossed. Bye.